In this video, everything goes horribly wrong. Or something like that. I, in this video, uh, I'm going to try to make lots of mistakes so that when you make those same mistakes in writing your programs, you will recognize the errors and be able to figure out what it is that you did wrong. So let's start making some mistakes. One of the top two mistakes is a simple misspelling. I meant to write square, but I didn't. I wrote sway instead. I'm going to run this. It says this function is not defined. Okay, the first thing, I'm gonna keep saying this, the first thing that you need to do when you see an error is to look at that piece of your program and think, what was that piece of the program supposed to do? Because you know, and Dr. Rackett doesn't. Okay. So before you even read the error message, take a look and, and figure out what it was supposed to be doing. Oh, this thing was supposed to be uh, creating a square. Okay. Once I know that, I can look down there and see this function is not defined. Well, why is this not function not defined? Oh, because I misspelled it. Okay. I misspelled it. All right, silly mistake. So this function is not defined. I, I just, I probably just misspelled it. Let's run that. Oh, oh dear. Square expects three R. Oh. Okay, again, let's look at the program and think about what it was supposed to do. Okay, it's calling the square function and it's trying to create a square. Okay, good, good. I got that. Now it says it expects three arguments. Gosh, I need three arguments to create a square? Okay, you know what? Let's go check the uh, help desk for this. Help desk says that uh, in order to create a square, I'm supposed to have a side length. I provided that. Oh, I'm also supposed to have a mode and a color. Right, 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 right. Mode and color. Oops. Well, let's. We can fix that. Okay. Uh, let's make it uh, green and solid. Okay. Let's run that. That still didn't work. Gosh, okay, so again, we're trying to create a square that's green and solid and of side 34. Okay, uh, let's see what it says. Expect a mode as a second argument given green, a mode. Uh, what the heck is a mode? Oh, let's go look at the documentation again. A mode, it says a, a mode, if the mode is outline or solid. I wrote outline, I wrote solid, right? So. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. I wrote solid, but, oh, 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 solid is, mode is supposed to be the second argument. Mode as a second argument. Oh, okay. Ah, my mistake. Okay, I'm going to switch those around. Let's try running it again. Hey, that time it worked. Okay, wonderful. All right, so I understood the error messages. I thought about what it was that it was supposed to be doing, and then I fixed it. The second most common mistake that you're going to make all the time is unbalanced parentheses, okay? And so it seems kind of obvious that I forgot the parenthesis in that case. But once I get nested fairly deeply, I might easily forget a parenthesis here or there. What does that look like? Oh, all right, read. Expected a right paren to close left paren. You know, what that's saying here is this pink left paren here, it doesn't have a matching close paren. All right. So what you need to do in that case is think about what it was that you wanted. And in this case, all we wanted was a jumble of matched right parens. So it's pretty easy to fix. All we need to do is to insert a close paren, let's say here. Given that this is meaningless, there isn't really a right place in which to place that parenthesis. So whenever I leave out a paren, how about that one? It's going to say, again, you forgot to have that right paren somewhere. Okay. Another really common source of mistakes arises from a desire, a perfectly reasonable desire, to write things in the way that you do in math. Let's say, for instance, uh, we define a function uh, f of x that adds 3 to x, Fine, and then we want to call it, I mean, let's say we write it like this. Looks right. It's the way you would have written it in math. It's not the way you write it in racket. You're probably going to do this while you're getting used to the prefix syntax 
of Dr. Racket. When we run this, the error message that we get, golly, okay, expected a function call, but there is no open parenthesis before this function, okay. A tendency, when you see something like this, is to fix half of the problem and to say, oh, right, I forgot, there's supposed to be an open paren before this thing and a close paren after it. Is this correct? Let's try. No, X, this function is not defined. Well, in this case, it has a bit of a point because we were actually trying to <clears throat> call it, let's say, on a number three. Let's take a look at this. Function call expected a function after the open parenthesis, but found a number. That error message can really take some time to wrap your head around. What's going on here is this. When Dr. Racket sees things wrapped in parentheses like this, it assumes that the first thing after the open paren is the name of the operator. That is to say, it's assuming that three is the name of the operator. Is three the name of the operator? No, F is the name of the operator here. In fact, there's only one operator here, F, but we have two pairs of parentheses. The problem is we have an extra pair of parentheses here. This is the expression that we wanted in the first place. This produces six. There's lots more errors that you're gonna run into, but those are three of the most common. Number one, misspelling a name. Number two, unbalanced parentheses. Number three, getting used to the surprising parenthesization that's required in Racket.